Good evening. I'm Carmelita Ong, the commentator. The theme for our readings today is leprosy. In biblical times, lepers were treated as prayat, as were cast out, not only socially, but religiously. But Jesus broke through the religious taboo to show us how we are to treat people society rejects. Just as Christ accepts us and cleanses us through the waters of baptism, so we should also welcome and accept others. The presider at this Mass is Father Dan Nascimento, our, our pastor. Please stand and let us begin. Our opening song is number 545, O oh God Beyond All Praising. We gather in prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. The song, O God, be all, all praising, our God who is so great and magnificent, and yet he comes to us in humility in the form of simple bread to nourish us, to be close to us. We are not deserving of his blessings, but in generosity, he extends it to us in love. So we begin acknowledging our faults, our failures, that we may welcome him in purity of heart. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, if someone has on his skin a scab or pustule or blotch, which appears to be the sore of leprosy, he shall be brought to Aaron the priest or to one of the priests among his descendants. If the man is leprous and unclean, the priest shall declare him unclean by reason of the sore on his head. The one who bears the sore of leprosy shall keep his garments rent and his head bare, and shall muffle his beard. He shall cry out, unclean, unclean. As long as the sore is on him, he shall declare himself unclean, since he is in fact unclean. He shall dwell apart, making his abode outside the camp. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed is he whose fault is taken away, whose sin is covered. Blessed the man to whom the Lord imputes not guilt, in whose spirit there is no guile. When I acknowledged my sin to you, my guilt I covered not. I said, I confess my faults to the Lord, and you took away the guilt of my sin. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you just. Exalt, all you upright of heart. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul, sorry, the first letter of, of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, 
do everything for the glory of God. Avoid giving offense, whether to the Jews or Greeks or the church of God. Just as I try to please everyone in every way, not seeking my own benefit, but that of the many, that they may be saved. By imitators of me, as I am of Christ, the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. A leper came to Jesus and kneeling down begged him and said, If you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched him, and said to him, I do will it, be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately and he was made clean. Then warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. He said to him, see that you tell no one anything, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places, and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. Liz O'Dwyer, he, she's a mother of two and was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2016. She underwent chemotherapy and had a double mastectomy, but the cancer returned and spread to her bones. She was given a terminal diagnosis and was told she had only a few months to live. One day when she was feeling particularly low, she decided to go for a walk. She came across a group of people who were giving out free hugs. Liz was hesitant at first, but then decided to approach them. She was embraced by a stranger who held her for a long time. The hug was so comforting that Liz broke down in tears. The stranger turned out to be Juan Mann, the founder of the Free Hugs campaign. You can see a video about him on YouTube, and he has close to 79 million views. Juan started this because his life was falling apart. His parents were divorcing, and his fiance broke off their engagement. As he moved to a remote area away from all people, a friend of his tracked him down and dragged him to join him in a party. There, a complete stranger walked up to him and hugged him. For that brief moment, he didn't feel down about himself, and he realized the power of a simple hug. This started the Free Hugs campaign. He made a sign 
went out to the streets of Sydney, Australia, and started giving free hugs. This has born and quickly went viral and spread all over the world. What a beautiful story of human kindness. Perfect strangers comforting one another with a simple hug. Similarly, in today's gospel, we heard other, another man come to Jesus and kneeling before him, he begged Jesus saying, if you wish, you can make me clean. Jesus responded by stretching out his hand, touching him and saying to him, I do will it. I do will it. Be made clean. The power of human love. The story is even more amazing when we realize that in Jesus' time, they had no cure for leprosy. And so what we heard in today's first reading is how to quarantine this contagious disease in order to protect the rest of the population. The leper is set apart from everyone else and warn people to stay away from him by yelling, unclean, unclean. No one may touch a leper for fear that they might also be infected. So Jesus' simple action, reaching out and touching a leper, was probably the first time anyone has touched him since his disease began. And it probably meant the world to him that Jesus cared. Though we may not have the power like Jesus to cure, but we all have the power to care and to touch people's lives. There are studies that show that babies without human touch can die. Marcel Gerber was sent by a United Nations committee to study the effects of protein deficiency on Ugandan children. She found to her surprise that Uganda's infants were developmentally the most advanced in the world. Why were they so healthy? It seems that Ugandan infants are almost constantly held by their mothers or other relatives. The physical contact with the mother and the constant movement seem to be the factors that propel these infants to maturity beyond Western standards. So we all have the power within us to do good and make a difference in people's lives. St. Paul in today's second reading said, I try to please everyone in every way not seeking my own benefit, but that of the many, that they may be saved. And paradoxically, even as we think of others first, forgetting ourselves, that seems to be the secret to happiness. The happiest people are not the rich or famous, but it's usually those who give of their time and their talent in the service of others. We may not be like Jesus, and we may not be able to do miracles, but we all have the power to show human kindness, to rekindle hope, to give back to people the desire to live, to inspire them a better future, and to restore self-respect and pride. We all have the power to show kindness and love. Amen.
to our God who wishes to reach out and touch us as well. To him, let us renew our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Heavenly Father, knowing that you wish us to be cleansed of sin through what your Son has done for us, we humbly pray. For the church, that she open her arms ever wider to those feeling most rejected, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our civic leaders, that they strive to uphold in law the values of the Judeo-Christian tradition, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those celebrating Chinese New Year, that they enjoy spiritual well-being and harmony in their households, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Troop 15, our Boy Scouts here at St. Anne's, that they continue to grow in honor through their service to the community, their duty to country, and their respect for God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are ill, especially Earl Ingebretson, that they gain healing and strength, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Bernie Barron, Father Robert Kevin White, Joan Benjamin, and Christine Ann Quinn, as well as those who mourn for them, that they find peace and rest in God's love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. This Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of Lynn Lee. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we trust you to heal and purify us as you've healed and purified others, granting our prayers through Christ our Lord. The song for the preparation of the gifts is number 356, Ubi Caritas, 356.
Pray then, my sisters and brothers, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is really right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race, and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when as once with the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and set the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, Holy Fathers, we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his, passion and the, on the, through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. 
Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be conduct now and until the day of eternity among the members of your son in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church which is in San Francisco by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis our Pope, Salvatore our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, then in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember also our brothers and sisters, Lin Li, and all who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and the resurrection. Give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs, with Saint Anne, Saint Joachim, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ your son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God as our Father, and so with confidence we pray. Our Father. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
The communion song is number 606. Your words are spirit and life, 606. Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live. Through Christ our Lord. And we have a few announcements. You may be seated. Our second collection this Sunday is for the building and maintenance fund. Thank you for your support in caring for God's house. Others, you may now take up the collection. Don't forget, this Wednesday is us Wednesday. It's the beginning of Lenten season. Masses that day will be at 8.45, 12 p.m., and 6 p.m. And we encourage you to begin this season with a Lenten retreat. We have a popular speaker, Dr. Scott French, an ER doctor 
share about near-death experiences and Eucharistic miracles. To accommodate us from his busy schedule, he offered an early date in Lent, this coming Saturday, right after Ash Wednesday, so that we'll be on Saturday, February 17, from 12 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the school. For more information or sign up, visit the table in the vestibule. We also encourage you to participate in small group activities to nurture your faith and to be part of a faith community. See the vestibule information table for activities ranging from a book club to exploring angels in the Bible and in the world to caring for our Mother Earth activities, Christian meditation, as well as being part of Lent and Easter choir. And as always, we have the Station of the Cross on Fridays of Lent at 7 p.m. with a simple soup supper starting at 6 p.m. We encourage you to do something to help you grow in faith during Lent. Thanks, Carmelita. Thank you also to Randall, beautiful music, as well as our faithful server. He was the only one, but he, she's here. So thank you, as well as our lectors and uh, Eucharistic minister and usher. So thank you all for your ministry. Please stand. And so may the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God. Our closing song is number 502. Go make a difference, 502. <laughs>